find me. I'm just choking on my plays on over here, ladies and gentlemen. Also, I know I'm a day late on this, but happy great first of May 1st day. I've received zero contributions. Let's dive on into it, shall we? I received zero contributions. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host who chokes the most. Pause. Avery Lark 32 here and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1400 ladder. I'm not talking about choking things, ladies and gentlemen. I know where your mind's at. It's okay, mine's in the gutter too. All the time, I may be 27, 28 in October, I still have the mind of a 12 year old. But my God, ladies and gentlemen, so. I've been playtesting like crazy in case I end up going to YCS Indy. Um, and then there's also a regional this upcoming Saturday that I'm going to. So I've been playtesting with Tempai really hard. Like we've been going hard in the paint, right? And my God, I talk about how I have dog water luck in this game. And that is still true. That's been true for years now in this game, especially if you've been watching for a long time. I'm always talking about that. But it doesn't help when I'm choking my plays. Like I'm choking on my own spit. Like... I don't know why I do this. <laughs> I really don't. I play test for hours and hours and hours on end. And then I still manage to fumble the football across like the goalposts. Like it blows my mind. I could play test a deck for 10 hours straight, like a 40 hour work week, like it's a job. And then I just take it to a regional, to a YCS, to locals. And I just fumble the ball like it's nobody's business. You know, it takes me back in case you haven't seen the deck profile or if you're newer to the channel, when your boy got 10th place and made himself the self-appointed Centurion King when we got 10th with Centurion. <laughs> I remember I was X1 going into, what was it, round 7 of an 8-round tournament? Yeah, it was round 7. I'm going against Infernoble. I go first in game 3, and I make Crimson Dragon. This man has no field, and I shotgun the ever-living hell out of the Crimson Dragon, and of course he has Imperm, and I proceed to lose. I would have won the game otherwise, and I'm like, why do I do these things? Like, a part of it is nerves, right? Like, I mean, I'm X1, uh, if I win this round, then I'm guaranteed to get my invite, right? Because then I'm 7 and, uh, well, 6 and 1 at that point, so whether I win or lose the last round, I have my invite. So then I had to, like, be on the bubble going into the last round to hopefully win, um, whereas if I just won that game, then I knew I was good. If I win the last round, that's a top four finish out of, you know, a hundred plus players. And so a part of it is nerves, right? But I knew the deck inside now. Centurion was not hard to play. This was back when the deck had just first came out. Tikaboo was still at three. Go watch the deck profile. Shameless plug. But it's like, I have a history of doing this, whether the deck is complicated or not. And I don't know why, like... Even when I played 60 card Branded Eldritch, when I got like 28th or 27th, whatever that was, with that deck, like, I can't think off the top of my head if I ever fumbled the football, so to speak, with that, but yet, it just seems like I'm always having to work my ass off to either get my invite or to get these tops that, like, I know the deck inside now. Let me talk about what happened at Locals yesterday as an example. Um, so I'm playing against my buddy Sean in the Tempai Mirror Match, which was hilarious i might add but in game one i used magnum mutt and he does his plays whatever guess what i forget to do i get to or i forget to search off my fucking magnum mutt and i would have won the game because i top decked fenrir i would have top decked something different since i would have searched uh chundra uh he had sangin kaiman set I most likely would have won the game, ladies and gentlemen. I also fumbled the football round one against Tier, which I actually went to time, which obviously is a Tempai player. I'm not playtesting to go to time, but I should have won anyway because I opened up double Sangin Kaiman. I go Sangin Kaiman, add Pydra. Uh, Tier element doesn't play hand traps other than in Hoff Venice, which is a one of. Summon the Pydra, get summoning, summoning, get Chundra, make Ancient Fairy pop, gain a thousand, play Pressured Planet, get Rise Heart. I can do my whole. Um, you know, link play into Promethean Princess Atlantis, the whole nine, kill time off the clock, I win because I'm a thousand higher. And I end up losing because he scatter shots me off of a sprite sprint. And I'm like, he ended up going undefeated last night. And I'm like, why do I fumble the football so hard? Again, granted, you're never going to go to time with Tempai, right? But, and I'm not play testing for that. But the fact that I had the game in my hands and, like, I just fumble it because I'm thinking, oh, I'll go down Promethean Princess, still get to Zelantis, and, like, somehow make an Ancient Fairy. And I'm like, 
why do I do these fucking things to myself? I don't understand. And so, like, it's these things that I don't know if it's my nerves. I don't know if it's like I start overthinking things. I know that people have told me you tend to get tunnel vision with with playing decks. And I, I absolutely am guilty of that. And I've been trying to get out of that. Especially, like, with Tempai, even though people said the deck is linear, something that it's very good at teaching you is that you look at your technically six-card hand since you draw for turn. You look at your six-card hand and you think... How can I methodically break apart this player's board and be able to win? Like, there's actually a lot of thinking and skill and technical play that can go into stuff like that. You know, you want to make sure that you're using your droplets at its most effective rate. You know, activating Lightning Storm, even if they have a negate. Chain the droplet, pitch something. Uh, if you have a Chundra on the field and you attack and they activate an Imperm, you go damage step, activate Chundra, chain droplet, tribute it. It resolves off the field. You get the summon off the Chundra. Go for Fadra, get back Chundra. Now you've got two bodies. You can play the game. Things like that that may not come up very often come up when you're understanding the technical play, when you are thinking about these things and not just like letting your heart explode out of your chest because some dude with a hoodie or a hat on and a hoodie over the hat looking like a fucking Momo is like playing a quarter century secret rare maxed out electric boogaloo snake eye deck and they spent like two grand on it and they have nothing better to do other than play that deck and they try to psych you out by putting on sunglasses like they think that they're playing poker like these are things that i don't know why i'm fumbling so hard but i am and it drives me up a wall like i remember when i was younger uh, and I would play against these players that were older than me because I was always like the youngest one in the room, right? Like, I mean, I've been playing competitively since 2008. So you got to think I was 12 years old back then, roughly. I was born in 96. So everybody was always older than me, whether it was teenagers, young adults, adults, like in their 20s, things like that. So I was always sort of on the back foot in that regard of like, oh my God, this guy's older than me. Like, he's a better player than me. He's on X Saber. He's on Dragon Ruler or Spellbook, you know, like whatever the case may be. Oh my God, I'm going to lose. And it's like... That has been the bane of my existence, I feel, for years. And the reason why I'm making this video is because surely I can't be the only one, right? Surely there has to be other people who play this game who experience the same thing or have experienced the same thing and have learned to get over that hurdle or teach themselves a way to get over it. Like, if you remember back uh, when I was playing purely Sprite, one of the things that I would say all the time, and I still say, is that, you know you're the person across the table from you is just another human being they take a dump like you they do their taxes like you do they go to school they go to work like they're just another human being you know you can apply this to jesse cotton joshua schmidt pat chris leblanc whoever i do not care what their accolades are uh when i get in, when i went against uh lars or whatever his name was the guy that came in second at last year's nationals and i went against him round one at that one regional that i played purely sprite like, I did not care what his accolades were. In my head, I'm still thinking, I have just as much of a chance to beat you as anybody else, whether it's Jeremy Mitchell, whether it's Joe Bigelow, who has 55 regional tops and 10 YCS invites, or first place finishes, you know, tops, whatever. And it's like now, I don't know if it's just because Tempai is a underdog-esque deck where if you don't open up any hand traps, like the opponent just kind of gets to build a board. And then there are certain situations that come up that, you know, you may or may not prepare for. And granted, locals is going to be different. You know, you're going to have different players playing different decks. Like, I went against a Thunder Dragon Pile deck, like, with Chaos Dragon, Levy and Year, stuff like that. He ended up ripping two cards out of my hand, like, two, like, game one and game three. Ended up hitting Talents to draw two into Chundra and Imperm and just won the game because all he had was Little Knight. So, like, these weird kind of oddball decks come up. You know, it's not going to be like a regional where you're just playing against, like, Snake Eye, Rescue Ace, Branded, you know, these other things. You know, these other rogue strategies are going to pop up, whether it's Runic Stun, Regular Stun, Thunder Dragon, Colossus Pile, like, you know, whatever. And I understand that. And that can kind of cause some nerves, especially when you don't really know how the deck functions. Um... Or, you know, you go up against a deck that's a bad matchup that you're not expecting to play against. Like, Tier Element's actually kind of a really tough matchup for Tempai, depending on, like, their RNG and how they get set up. It's all RNG based with Tier, but it can still be a tough matchup, right? Um, and so that can kind of cause some nerves, and that's where, like, if you know how to side deck, if you know your deck's strengths and weaknesses, if you know the strengths and weaknesses of even your bad matchup and where their choke points are, then that can kind of help you. And I feel like I know all of these things. Like, I've really fallen in love with Tempai. Like, this is the first deck in a while where, like, I could religiously sat down from like 10 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night and just play it. 
because it's just that fun of a deck to me, especially now that we're getting new support in Infinite Forbidden to kind of play around with. But I just don't understand why for years, ever since I was a kid, I've had this issue of like whether it's nerves, whether it's just getting tunnel vision and not seeing a better play. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, and surely I can't be the only person who is making these kinds of mistakes or who has this like mind block and like needs to open their third eye with chakra or something, you know what I mean? And that's what separates like the godly players like Joshua Schmidt, Jesse Cotton, whoever, from your table 500s. You know, they can see plays that maybe other people don't see or they, you know, can bluff better than other people can. And that's especially true for stuff like GOAT format and not so much this format, um, modern Yu-Gi-Oh. But I just don't understand why I keep fumbling the football. And I want to improve as a player. I know Tempi like the back of my hand. The mirror match is a joke. I can destroy the mirror match, you know, nine times out of ten. The one time being because I brick. Like, or they the opponent stacks their deck, which at that point you're going to lose every time. But, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Surely I can't be the only one. What, what are some things that you do to help get out of that mental mind block? So, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.